All right, time for an update on the latest news in Australian property. And joining us, as always, every fortnight to discuss is the editor of Your Investment Property magazine, Emma Duffy. G'day, Emma. How are you doing? Hey, good. Good. How are you? Not too bad, thanks. I'm hungry. Hungry, yeah. that is, for some uh, investment property news. So at risk of stating the obvious, Emma, um, mm -hmm. homes are becoming increasingly unaffordable to buy. But uh, what's the latest research actually telling us? Yeah, uh, so a report came out from the Real Estate Institute of Australia and they found that housing affordability has declined to its lowest level in nearly 30 years since they started tracking affordability in 1996. Uh, so over the June mm. quarter of 2024, the average Australian loan repayment jumped to almost half of the median family income at 48%, uh, which is not surprising really when you consider how far property, property prices have risen uh, over the last few years especially. Uh, and the issue is really twofold. There's rising interest rates and inflation that are squeezing homeowners and renters. Uh, and we're seeing that even though home loan rates have stabilised at the moment, the average uh, standard variable rate sitting at about the 8.8% mark, uh, which is also the highest in over a decade, the pressure is still very much on for people who are trying to enter the market at the moment or just mm -hmm. keep up with their mortgage repayments. Um, but we're seeing that even despite all of that, first home buyers are still managing to get into the market. Uh, the number of first home buyers actually increased by almost 20% in the June quarter of this year. And they now make up uh, about 36% of the owner rock market. Mm. So, um, you know, it's quite, you know, they are taking on bigger loans as well, though. Um, the average loan size for first home buyers has risen to over 532,000. And in some states like South Australia, the average first home buyer loan size has also gone up um, by as much as 5%. Uh, and how does the investment side of things play into this? Um, are investors pushing up prices even more? Yeah, investors have um, been very, very active in the market, particularly in the last year. Uh, we've seen the value of new investor loans uh, has risen by about 35% since July last year. Um, so we are seeing a lot of um, investor driven demand, hmm. which is partly fueling these price increases, especially as we've got you know, rising rents and then very low vacancy rates. Um, but there's also a big misconception that investors are directly competing with first home buyers, but that's not necessarily true. You know, we do hear a lot of rhetoric about investors taking homes away from first home buyers, but We've seen that the two groups can coexist in the market and investors often are adding supply through uh, new developments, which is really important, especially during a housing shortage like the one we're seeing at the moment. Yeah, that's a nice segue into the next question, Emma. Um, you know, we can launch some generational warfare, some investor versus, you know, first home buyer warfare all we like. But uh, at the end of the day, I, I think a government has a large hand in this current uh, supply crunch at the moment. Um, the Housing Australia Future Fund, I think, kicked off at the start of this financial year. Um, yeah, how's that panning out so far? <laughs> Uh, not very well. Um, so the federal government, as we know, set a pretty ambitious target uh, to meet to build 1.2 million new homes by 2029. Mm. Um, but so far in 2024, we've only seen 160,000 new homes commence, which is well below the 240,000 homes a year, which is needed to meet the 1.2 million target. Mm. And projections indicate that even by 2026, we'll still be 40,000 homes short annually, um, building just over 200,000 homes a year. And a big reason that we're struggling so much is the construction crisis. Uh, so we've seen a lot of media. Uh, we've covered it a lot and the rest of the media's covered it a lot. Builders going bust across the country at a really alarming rate. Uh, mm. You've got builders like Porter Davis and, and countless others that have all collapsed uh, due to skyrocketing construction costs and a number of other things, um, which has led to a lot of uncertainty in the industry more widely uh, with, with many developers holding off on new projects uh, completely because they just can't make the numbers work. Um, so, you know, even with government initiatives in place to sort of streamline all these approvals and increase mm. supply, the rising costs are making it almost impossible to get some of these projects off the ground. Um, and, yeah, it's, that's a pretty serious concern if we, if we are serious about tackling uh, this housing crisis. All makes for pretty grim reading. Uh, is there anything that um, renters and home buyers can feel hopeful about on the horizon? We're starting to see uh, an increased interest in build-to-rent development. Mm. So unlike the traditional build-to-sell model that we have a lot of here in Australia, um, build-to-rent projects are very popular overseas 
particularly in Europe, and they're designed specifically to provide rental properties. So um, unlike, you know, the typical mom and dad investors that we have, uh, they're funded purely by large institutional investors like real estate investment trusts or private equity firms, and the developer retains ownership of the whole building and then leases out the properties long term um, to renters. So there's a lot of benefits for renters under this model, um, much more stable, secure housing with longer lease terms. Um, but it faces a lot of hurdles as well. Um, like we said before, with the construction crisis, a lot of builders are going bust. So that's having a big impact on it as well. Uh, we also have a mindset shift required, particularly here in Australia, where a lot of people see home ownership as the ultimate goal uh, and renting as a stepping stone towards that. But there are some, uh, there's a handful of build to rent projects in Australia already, mostly through Mervac. Um, so we've got one in a few in Sydney, I think, um, and we've got one as well that's slated for Newstead. So it's an interesting space and, um, yeah, it should be interesting to see if it's viable in Australia and how that will progress. Certainly, sure is. Uh, thanks for that market update, Em. Don't forget, listeners, you can sign up to uh, for free to receive the Your Investment Property magazine every other month. All you have to do is visit Your Investment Property magazine's website, click join now and complete a short two-minute survey, and then you will be receiving that uh, magazine. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks Cheers. Thanks, Emma.